Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this presentation I'm going to show you I Teach Windowing. Now, as you can probably imagine, I Teach Windowing is used to explain how windowing works, why we need it, what leakage means, and so on. Now, what we have here is a signal and the FFT of the signal here. So there's the spectrum. Uh, in this case, I've got 15 hertz, and we can see it starts at zero and goes all the way through and ends at zero. So it sits right in the time block when we do the FFT. Down here, I have the spectrum. Now, I'm using an 800 line, sorry, 800 hertz spectrum with 800 lines. So my bandwidth is 1 hertz, I haven't got windowing turned on, and my resolution is 1 hertz. And these are the different bins or lines in the spectrum. 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3 hertz, 14 hertz, 15 hertz, 16 hertz, 17 hertz. So here's 15 hertz, and we've got a signal of 15 hertz. So it's exactly as we expect. We've got a signal of 15 hertz, um, an FFT, we expect a peak at 15 hertz. There's no vibration at 14 or 16 hertz, so we don't see anything at 14 or 16 hertz. So, this is a perfect situation. Uh, because of the lines of resolution and the F max, we have a bin at 15 hertz, we have a signal of 15 hertz. But what happens when we increase the frequency? Now we're at 15.1 hertz, 15.2 hertz, 15.3 hertz. I do not have a bin in my spectrum at 15.3 Hz. It's kind of like the spectrum and the FFT calculation saying, well, you're giving me a signal that's not finite within the, the block of time that you are processing with the FFT calculation. Um, and as a result, we get leakage. All the vibration you can see is leaking out. If you just watch that amplitude for a minute, just watch as we go from 15. So here's you know, the, the amplitude right now. And if we then increase it, watch what happens. The peak drops down as the energy leaks out into those side loads, as they're called. Uh, if we keep going, we get up to 16 hertz. And now the 16 is finite within the block. And we've got a nice sharp peak there at 16 hertz. Nothing at 15, nothing at 17. And of course, whoops, if we just back off on that frequency again, you can see that even though the analyzer might give us a peak at 16 hertz, um, we've got this, this leakage problem and the amplitude's way off and it's sort of impossible for us to really determine what's going on, what, what vibration we have. The solution to all of this is to use windowing. And if I turn on my Henning window, you can see what happens to the time waveform. I squeeze out the beginning and end of the time waveform. So no matter what frequency it is, it's always finite within our time block. The gray signal in the back is the original signal. We window it, as, so, as you can see. Um, but when we do that, we increase the bandwidth. And unfortunately, that means that the width of the peak increases. Now, if we were looking at all 800 lines of the spectrum or 800 hertz of the spectrum, this is still going to look like a, a relatively sharp peak. We're only looking at 25 hertz of the 800 hertz spectrum. So it's still going to look like a sharp peak. Um, so that's acceptable. We accept the fact that the, the frequency isn't, or that the peaks are a bit broader. But we'll get into that little point in just a moment. Now, what happens when I go to 16.1 hertz? 16.2 hertz. You can see that the peak takes on a bit of a strange shape and as we go to 16.5 hertz you can see that I've got half the vibration at 16 and half of it at 17. So if you were analyzing that on your computer screen, you know the vibration from the machine, you wouldn't really know what frequency it is. But the good thing is if you just look at the shape of this peak, the red line represents the actual frequency of the signal. When it falls on one of the bins, we get a nice looking peak. And when it's between the bins, we see this little mountain below it. But if I know the amplitude here, 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 and here, there's a calculation I can perform, knowing that it's a handing window that was used, that allows me to not only determine what this actual frequency is, 
but also what the amplitude should be because this amplitude will be up to 15% lower than it than it really is you know either from the machine or whatever your signal source is so you'll find that in your software you should have a function that lets the software analyze the peak and determine what the real frequency and amplitude is now if you didn't do that and you turned on harmonic curses uh, and for example if you in this situation you know put your cursor there and it said okay 18 Hertz um, you would find that you know, the second harmonic is going to be at 36 Hertz but twice that is not 36 Hertz and three times and four times you'll, you'll find that little harmonic markers won't point to the actual peaks whereas with this function you can tell it I want the cursors to be at 17.6 Hertz and twice that and three times that and four times that and you'll find the harmonics line up so I've heard lots of cases where vibration analysts think ah oh, something isn't a harmonic series whereas it really is and the same is obviously true for sidebands anyway so one of the issues we have to use the uh, the windowing function otherwise we get all that leakage and amplitude and so on but one problem is that it, it does broaden the peak now if I just drop this down a little bit and uh, turn it on now I've got two signals so here I have a signal 13 Hertz and 18 Hertz and if we were looking at this in the spectrum we would see that there are two peaks but if the vibration if the two sources of vibration were close I can still see there's two peaks still see there's two peaks I can still see there no I can't really I can't tell that I've got two peaks there even though I've got 800 lines of resolution and a resolution of 1 Hertz these two signals are, are actually 2 Hertz apart yet I cannot tell that there are two peaks there if I just back off then I can see it well that's where this bandwidth comes in we've got a bandwidth of 1.5 Hertz we need to be able to separate those peaks so they need to be further apart now if I was to turn off windowing oh I can easily see there's two peaks now you know I can still see there's two peaks until you know I get to about this point because the bandwidth is lower but we've already explained we cannot use um, we, we must use windowing to avoid this this leakage problem which means we do need to use a higher resolution spectrum so let's try that a higher resolution spectrum there you go now I can see that there are two peaks you know my resolution is, has improved you know by a factor of two my bandwidth has improved by a factor of two anyway lots of things we can do with this just to explain these two points we've got lots of little case studies where we can play around with data and all those kinds of things and lots of lots of other stuff in the classroom that talks about these topics to help explain it but this is a simulator spotlight so we don't need to go into all of this so I hope you enjoyed this little presentation of I teach windows I hope maybe it helped you understand a little bit about leakage and windowing and, and all that sort of thing as well thanks for taking the time to view this presentation